And one thing I love about ads and I preach about ads is ads is the fastest way, hands down, to like grow your wealth. Okay. okay. Like you got a lot of ways. You got real estate. You got stock. Some people like their thing is crypto. It's like different things, right? Mm-hmm. Like you, can, you can't put your money nowhere else and get as a higher ROI as ads. Okay. So, for example, if you look at like the top investors in the world, if you look at like a Warren Buffett, if you look at a Ray Dalio or something like that, mm-hmm. these guys probably probably get 20 percent a year. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's great. Right. I mean, of course, they're playing with big money mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with ads. So like, I know a lot of my guys who do real estate. So typically they get 12 percent, 16 percent, something like that a year. Right. Um, with ads, I mean, you can get two, three, four hundred percent every month. So you can spend five thousand dollars on ads and make twenty five thousand every month and that's just an immediate money because let's just say for example you got you spent five thousand on ads you got let's say you was paying ten dollars a lead so you got about 500 leads okay. out of those 500 leads you got end up getting five people to buy your offer and let's say your offer right. is five thousand so you made twenty five thousand let's say some did payment plan some did in full so let's say you let's say your cash collected was half of the twenty five thousand so let's say you made let's say you collected thirteen thousand of the twenty five thousand mm-hmm. So you doubled your money right out the mm-hmm. gate, right? And then you got the, the rest of it going to come in over the next 30 to 60 days. That was just from five of the leads. Mm-hmm. You still got 495 leads right. that didn't buy. So out of that, so now you immediately got a, what, 5000 to 25000 You immediately got a 5X return on your money. Mm-hmm. But over the next 30, 60, 90 days, six months, 12 months, mm-hmm. you're still going to get a higher ROI. So we made money this year. From money we spent last year. I see. We spent money last year from money we spent the year before. Wow. Yeah. But a lot of times people are short, they're so short sighted. Yeah. Where they like, I need to make money now. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you're gonna make money now, but a lot of people kill the later on money for like having to make money right now and they need they get either. Hello, rich friends. Welcome to another episode of the New Rich Podcast. I'm Dr. Uyi Abraham as my co-host. Dr. Faith Abraham. Hello, rich friends. Welcome back. So good to see you. And we have a special treat for you all today. And we have one of our most favorite people on the planet, a really good man, an entrepreneur, possibly the goat of marketing and Wow. They call him the king of client attraction. Thank you. And uh, we're going to be coming to him shortly. But before that, let me ask Dr. Faith, how was your week? My week was phenomenal. Busy as usual. Just getting the kids situated. You know, we have some kids transitioning from yeah. high school to high school, elementary to... So it's been busy. How about you? Mine was good. I just got back from uh, the Bahamas. Jealous. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Dr. Phil was kind of hating on me a little bit. I sure was. I, I was I, not hiding it at all. I was in his DMs. I was texting him like, Yeah, and she's like, I'm jealous. Time. I'm like, why? <laughs> she's like, because you're in the Bahamas, you're in the sun. And it was the, the weekend that Atlanta was very cold. Cold, Last weekend. rainy. Yeah. It was disgusting. I'd rather be in the Bahamas sun. It's beautiful. I really love the Bahamas. And I if do. rich friends, if you've never been to the Bahamas, you yeah. should. Is I've been to Mexico, all these other cool places. But maybe the time we went to Mexico last time, the weather was really hot. I loved it. And though. Yeah. You were, it you were sweating, but I was enjoying it. It I was loved too heat, hot. Mm-hmm. You know, Bahamas is hot, but not a, not like Mexico no, it's like hot. A cool. And the water warm. is the bluest, most beautiful water you've ever seen in your life. It is. You know, so it was really, really good. And uh, I went there, supposed to be like vacation, mm-hmm. mostly to rest, but mm-hmm. I'm always working on vacation. And I don't know how to stop that. I probably need a therapist or something. <laughs> how to now work because I do enjoy mm-hmm. doing stuff and right. being mm-hmm. productive, you know? And I mean, I can be in the water, in the beach for four, five, six hours, but I, I don't want to be there for three days just in the water. Like, mm-hmm. I'm like, it's this stuff to do. Right. That's but to not me, productive. Being you know? in the water is something to do. See that? Yeah, That's I can. Productive. I can handle it for a couple of hours, but. I got to do a little bit more, but I am really trying to just learn how to just you take two, a full 24 hours without having to walk or be on my laptop. It's Y'all pray for him. extremely hard for me. <laughs> extremely hard to not do that. I know, Dr. McCoy, you 
had a, I saw you posted something some time ago. How you said you were, I think on vacation, you probably didn't do any work. Mm -hmm. And then your, you know, your numbers went up or something. Mm -hmm. So how long did you go on vacation for? So most recently we went to, we went to the Bahamas for Christmas actually. Okay. So we started doing this thing where we, every year we bring Christmas in somewhere else. Okay. So we did Bahamas mm -hmm. this year. So we was there for five or six days. Okay. Did you work? Nope. Don't work. You didn't get. I didn't, I did didn't you even take a laptop. I, so I always have my laptop with me, but I didn't open it. And typically, I'll take it with me just in case the TV isn't, doesn't work there, just in case we want to get on Netflix or Hulu or something like that. Okay. But um, but yeah, I didn't. I, I even had. So I had my main phone. I had it on, um, airplane mode the whole time. I had my backup phone just in case, like my oldest son or oldest daughter, they tried to contact us or something mm -hmm. like that, or pass a deal them or somebody. But only like four or five people even got. So what you're saying is. You had your laptop. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't open it. You didn't open it. Yeah. Really? And no and work. you had your laptop, but you didn't have your laptop just in case whatever work scenario, you had your laptop for other leisurely scenarios. Yeah, for sure. Let me just... Yeah. Nobody company-wide could even get in contact with me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah nobody, could, nobody could even contact me. I'm just putting... For, I'm yeah. putting pressure on him, y'all. Yeah. Okay. Was, like, was there like a week? Was there like a week? No work? But it's like when you come back, like your productivity is through the roof. Yeah. Like your productivity, your creativity, like it's it's on a whole nother level. And oh. I always tell my clients, like when you're free, when you double your free time, your income doubles. Mm. Okay. All <laughs> right. So okay. if you think about it, you think about it. Your best ideas come to you when? When I'm out of the out of Atlanta. When you're not doing so like probably and when, when I'm not the, walking. When, when you're I'm not working. Thinking when of you're work. in the shower or you in the yeah. hot tub or yeah. you're driving, driving or just yeah. doing nothing, you yes. get you get this thing you've been working on, it yes. finally hits you yes. when you just was let it when you weren't on it. So the more you do of that, the more you get those moments. Rest equals money, y'all. One hundred percent. Quote Dr. Marquel Russell. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Wow, and he's already dropping gems already. I'm like, I tell you, we've not even we've not mm -hmm. formally introduced you yet. Yeah. Like, come mm -hmm. on now, what? Why are you doing this? You you did it. You brought me in. I was just I was just listening. You pulled okay. me in. Before we formally introduce, what part of Bahamas did you did you guys go? To? Did you guys stay just in Nassau, or did you guys go around? We we were in Nassau. Um, we were mainly in Nassau. My wife and them, we just, we had a driver, so they took us to like this tea spot that was dope. But I think it was all in Nassau. Though. Okay. okay. Nassau. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Because I went to um, Freeport. Freeport and, okay. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna mess me up now. Um, Ocean One Paradise. What's different? They have over. I think they have like seven hundred islands. Yeah. In Bahamas. Yes. And yeah. The lady, the dri our driver was like, they have. It's a lot. Thirteen hundred and only X amount. Um, what was the word she used? Yeah, in a, in a bit. In a bit. Yeah, that's, people, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's I'm mean, how you keep up with all those names. I can't. It's too much. Yeah, it's a lot. You know? It's a lot. You know, and uh, it's just so amazing. Turning your knowledge into revenue is supposed to be a seamless experience, but you're stuck dealing with messy tech and the frustrations of tying multiple tools together just to create and sell online. Using multiple platforms to run one business wastes a lot of time and money. With Fonza, simplify your online business and delight your customers. One platform to run your business effectively. Create courses sell products build website sales funnels grow community coach clients send emails get paid Finally, all the tools you need to turn your knowledge into a flourishing business. Vonza is so easy to use. Start your free trial now at Vonza.com. The best all-in-one business platform. Okay, so we're going to get into it. So, <laughs> New Rich, you're going to see that this is our very first episode bringing our guest, and we have to bring in the GOAT for our very first one. And a good man and is a to me is the goat of client attraction and marketing is a marketing genius you know you. and i'm so excited to formally welcome dr marco yes, russell thank you so much thank you so much thank you thank you thank you for having me good 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 so you're the co-founder of client attraction university yep. and you're going to talk a little bit about that later but let's start by you just tell us tell our audience a little bit more about you maybe somebody i've never met you tell us mm -hmm. a bit about you about your story and how you got into doing what you do yeah so i actually 
I hesitate to say that I stumbled across this by mistake because okay. God don't make mistakes, right? right. Mm-hmm. However, it's like um, it's fascinating to me because I actually so quick backstory. I actually um, you know, grew up in a drug infested environment. Mm-hmm. Um, it was kind of twofold. So I like my aunt who raised me the first part of my life. Yeah. was on drugs real heavy, right? And then on the other side, my mom, my granddad, cousins sold drugs. So I was, that's what I was exposed to early on. Mm. Um, the people who I know who wasn't selling drugs were broke. <laughs> okay. And I always wanted to be rich. Wow. Even when I was young, my yeah. goal was to be a millionaire. When I was young, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. Well, I know how I'm going to do it. I'm going to go to the NBA or the NFL, just like all black kids, right? But everybody used to be like, you know, just have something to fall back on. Yeah. Right? So what I fell back on was selling drugs. So I started doing that. I dropped out of high school in 10th grade. So I got a 9th grade education. Um, hasn't haven't went back. Uh, I got a GD and a doctorate. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, uh, yeah. From GD to PhD. One hundred is that book coming out? I don't know. I we got to We got to get it done. We got to get it done. We okay. got to get it. We got to get it done. We got to get it. Just a shameless plug. You know, we publish books too. Do I'm you? Also do ghost reading. <laughs> yeah, we got to well, figure it out. We got to well, figure it out. I mean, I'm hopefully like somebody see this Simon and Schuster or somebody give me like a big publishing deal, and then we come to you and you help, <laughs> you help put it together, and it's like they give me a check to like write the whole thing. Yeah, that, would, that wouldn't be bad. What's a ghost right too? Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So I did. That dropped out of high school, went in the streets like full time. Mm-hmm. Um, at that time, my biggest goal was to be the biggest drug kingpin in the world. Wow! So I like that's what I admire. You know how we look up, we learn from different gurus and stuff yeah. like that now, right? So it's like um, I used to buy like documentaries. I used to study like Pablo Escobar and like Rayford Edmonds and Big Meech, and that's what I was on. Because mm-hmm. like whatever I go into, I like I'm all in. So mm-hmm. like I gotta figure this out. So that's what also I. Also, part of that was because that was your environment. That was my environment. We're exposed to. Yep. Mm-hmm. And we always model the behavior that we're exposed to because mm-hmm. as kids, there's no filter. One hundred percent. Just absorb whatever. One hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred percent. Environment. That environment. Yes. That's why it's so powerful. Yeah. One hundred percent. That environment and the goal that you already had in your mind to mm-hmm. be a millionaire, it was inevitable. So it was to inevitable. Speak. 100%. To, get, to go into that and start yeah. studying Bingo. those backgrounds. Bingo. You know, I never sold drugs, but I do like to study <laughs> right. Sting fans because they're very intelligent. 100%. They're very intelligent, crafty, uh, not in a bad way, but very understanding of how to make things move, how to work with people, how to sell a product, how to, like, you can't make... You can't just be a kingpin on accident. No, nah, it's a it's a, it's high level business. Exactly. It's business at the highest level. So yeah. it's like I even tell because you know I do a lot of work with Next Level Boys Academy and yeah. our Young Men as in Training Program. Mm-hmm. So we work with a lot of the young kings who are in the streets and they're doing stuff, but they haven't been exposed to nothing else. So I tell them yeah. like, hey, if you can run a gang, or if you can rob, or if you can, yep. they call it striking, like stealing cars, all the different type of stuff. Or you can sell mm-hmm. drugs. If you can do all that, like you can run a multi million dollar business because you know how to do branding. Right, mm-hmm. you know how to leadership stand out skills. From... You know how to stand out. Yeah. You know marketing. You know skills. Mm-hmm. You know analytics. You you you're you're okay with risk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. So you got everything it takes to build a multi million dollar business. You just haven't been shown how to like channel it yet. So so I just didn't know. I hadn't been shown how to channel it. Right. So I did that, and then I, um, you know, was getting locked up and stuff like that. Kind of comes with it. I started an entertainment company. And started doing like artist management, club mm-hmm. promotions, and stuff like that. I was managing some artists. I didn't rap, I didn't do beats, but I knew people who did. Okay. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna start a record label and I'm gonna bring them together. Okay. Yeah. And I'm gonna run the label. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was like, I can figure it out. Right. Mm-hmm. So I did that and then I started doing club promotions. We used to be in the club so much. One of the guys, a club owners, or at least a manager, mm-hmm. his cousin used to see us all the time. So he invited, I'm like, 18, 19 at this point. I'm young, right? Um, that's why I, even when you brought me in here, it brought back some memories. Really? Because like when I was like 19, right. yeah, when I was like 19-ish, mm-hmm. I um I bought this um when I, I didn't bought it, I rented it out. It was a hair salon. Okay. And when we went in, we like stripped out all the hair salon stuff. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then we turned it into a studio. Come on now. Yeah, so I was like 19, 20. I was, wow. but, I didn't, but I had a buddy of mine because we used to use his his studio at his parents' house though. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I was smoking weed and all that. So we couldn't smoke in the house. Mm-hmm. We couldn't like vibe out in the studio like we like mm-hmm. to vibe out. So I was like, I'm going to get a spot. Mm-hmm. You bring your equipment there. Mm-hmm. It'll be your spot too. I'll just pay for it. Right. And then we'll use your equipment. 
So we did that. We stripped the whole thing out, turned it into a studio. So when you brought me in, I started seeing it kind of <laughs> brought back some memories. So um, so fast forward, we I started. In, I got into club promotions. I was in the club one night. I got introduced to network marketing. Okay. Yeah. Familiar with network marketing? Yeah. So I got yeah. familiar with network marketing, <laughs> and I was like, "Wow, this is crazy!" Right? Like people are making money like this. You know, a lot of it they ain't really making the money they saying. But it sound right great, now. right? So I went and I was like, wow. So fast forward through all of that, I'm um, just giving you the abridged version. I ended up getting introduced to online marketing. Mm-hmm. And these online marketing guys were saying, here's how you build a network marketing business without doing home parties, home meetings. And I learned direct response marketing, mm-hmm. right? Which I didn't know that was the thing. Mm-hmm. When I was doing club promotions, I was doing marketing, mm-hmm. but I just didn't know you know what I was doing mm-hmm. so I got into it and it was just like white guys teaching it and I was like man yeah. these white guys making all this money and yeah. they're just gonna teach me how to do it like wow. in a course like this is crazy so I start buying courses and all this so imagine I'm in the streets I'm buying courses like wow. when I'm home <laughs> I'm riding around I'm listening to like Jim Ron yeah. and you know, you know? Zig Ziglar so it's this, right yeah there. so the transition started changing mm-hmm. so then people start seeing what I was doing I started teaching them what I was doing mm-hmm. to grow my network marketing business and then I saw I saw a big gap was that people didn't know how to get leads consistently to grow their business. Okay. Right. So it's like the biggest reason that I found people was failing because they didn't know how to get clients. Like it don't matter how great your product is or how great your service is or how amazing you are or how great your book is if don't nobody know it exists. Right. So I went all in on the marketing. Uh, fast forward, we started coaching. I found out coaching was a thing. Like okay. I didn't. People was like, "Well, you coach me?" And I'm like, "What is coaching?" Right? And I'm like, "This is a whole industry in itself." Mm-hmm. Right? So I went all in on the coaching stuff and um got them got we did great at that. Our clients started getting some amazing results. And I actually realized that I found I discovered my gift was actually teaching. Okay. Right? Like taking complicated concepts and then like breaking it down so that other people can actually get it. So I don't got like formal training, speaking on stages and all of that. Mm -hmm. So a lot, some of it came, it was the anointing, right? Yeah. So it kind of came from that. I was just doing my thing and being me and people like start getting it. So uh, we started coming to Client Attraction University. Um, Fast forward, we helped our clients do over 1 billion in revenue. 1 billion in revenue. Okay now. That's awesome. 1 billion in revenue and we'll just, we'll uh, want Inc. 5000's fastest growing companies list. So yeah, man, we just getting warmed up. Yeah, I know. Yeah, 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 we just getting warmed up. No, you know what? I let I want to rewind a little bit because you said something. You said you were just doing your thing. Mm-hmm. So you were growing. You were learning how to get things going, and then the people started asking you yeah. to coach them for sure. So it was basically a byproduct yeah. of you doing and mm-hmm. flowing in and staying focused on what you knew to do yeah. the most. And I tell people this all the time, like. What you know how to do is right under your nose. One hundred percent. But if you you have to focus on what it is that you are doing, whatever it is, and then when you do it so well, people will they have no choice but to ask you 100%. to show them. And so client attraction is kind of like the birth child of you just doing your thing yep. and it working so well that people are like, no, yeah, you got to show me something, and you mm-hmm. were kind of forced yep. to put something together that would now help. A mm-hmm. number of people at the same time. Yeah. For sure. Because like you said, you, like you said, what you're great at is right under your nose. Like my gifting has always been business. Even when I was like in the streets, like that's business. Right. But I didn't realize, yeah. but it's, that's been my gift and I've been great at it. I've been great at leading, teaching it, what we're doing, how to get results. And it's just like morphed into this, this new level of it. Okay, doc, hold on. Here's my problem. Here's <laughs> okay. my problem. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to speak out for some of the, some of our rich friends who are oh, well. going to be like, okay, that's cool for him. But how do I make the transition from what I've been doing yeah. and I feel comfortable <clears throat> in it's, it's getting me results yeah. to this new thing. I'm not sure if it's going to yeah. yield. And that scares people. That's scary. Try something new. Right. People just freeze. Yes. Yeah. They just freeze. Yes. They're like, okay, run ads. They're like, oh, I don't know where to start. Okay, learn it. Just yeah, learn it. Uh, start doing Facebook Live, but I don't know how to start. Just learn. Like, yeah. people freeze. How do you yeah. get that transition? I mean, it's, it's, it's fear. It's fear. Yeah. Yeah. So when I first got introduced to all this, it was like, oh, it was just white people teaching it. Yes. So I came in, so like... Can I say something? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let me interrupt you. And I told my wife this too. You were one of the first black people... I saw running ads on Facebook. Fact. Really? I yeah. can say it was you and Abu. Uh, Those nice. are the two for, for me. me for, yeah. And and uh, but, Danielle. Okay, for me. Okay, it was Danielle. Leslie. Leslie, okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. so for me, it was you. Because, yeah, you saw, I think I saw Macro first. And then and Boniface the, or Gonti. No, I, I saw you first. Then Boniface or Gonti. 
that are both started coming up, but you were like one of the very first people Interesting. that I saw running ads as a black person. It's like mm-hmm. come up years ago. Yeah. Yeah, everybody yeah. runs ads. Yeah. 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 But back then it was only the white people that were running ads. Mm-hmm. You know? I was like, who is this black guy running yeah. ads? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like, <laughs> but let me what? tell y'all my response. My uh, response is, and he got gold in his And he got gold in his <laughs> Right, for sure. Oh, for sure. I, like, it might be a drug dealer <laughs> right. kind of acting like he mm-hmm. kind of sells something. Right, what's right. Up right. To? Mm-hmm. And I was in pain and teach. I was just like, scroll past, but it kept coming up. <laughs> it on kept my coming page. up. I'm like, mm-hmm. what's up with this, you know? So I want to thank you, though. For sure. Because maybe people haven't told you that enough. For a lot of people, you were that first person that mm-hmm. they saw as a black person mm-hmm. that was really doing their thing or yeah. at least running ads on Facebook consistently. Mm-hmm. Right. You know? For sure. No, I mean, that's, we got to just get started. So I think for me, I used to be hesitant just like anybody else, right? Because mm-hmm. I, I, because I came in with, I didn't get like start doing this and we did well and went and got goals. It's like, I came in like this. I came in with the goals. I came in with the tattoos. Like I came in with this, right? So it was like, and so I had my like, dang, are people going to listen to me? Mm-hmm. You know, you know, do I need to change? Like, Mm-hmm. And I used to like, because I came out of network marketing, so I used to like feel like I had to be in suits and yep. stuff like that for people to take me serious. But yeah. it wasn't. Back a, in the day in network marketing, that's if it. you were not in a suit, and tailored suit, tailored, <laughs> yeah. $200. T- well, yeah. that's not yeah. a lot yeah. of money yeah. now, yeah. but back then, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's $200 yeah. tie. This and I wasn't even in the tailor. I wasn't in the tailor suits. I was, y'all from Atlanta, y'all in Atlanta, we, I was going to like DNK, DNK like two for 99. Facts. I was in those Facts. suits. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I bought my first two suits from DNK, two for 99. So, um, so that's what I was in, but it was like, I didn't, but it wasn't until I started just being me yeah, right. and dressing how I used to dress and how I'm comfortable, uh, when things actually took off, when I just start being me. So I think the biggest thing is people have to, I had to just have a conversation. It's like, this business is like sweet. It's mm-hmm. like, it's like compared to everything else you can't overcome in your life, like, What's the alternative? Like you, you put it, you put your video out, and somebody leaves a negative comment. Mm-hmm. Like, like what else have you dealt with in your life? Exactly. Right. Like the, the world I come from, it's like you can you build a you as you're building, you got so many different variables. Mm-hmm. Like you could the feds could come after you. Mm-hmm. Um, you could go to prison. Mm-hmm. You could somebody could try to kill you. Rivals. Like rivals. Mm-hmm. You got your homies trying to get at you. You got mm-hmm. girls trying. To, you got all these different things. Like as you're building a business, like. Your ad account getting shut down, yeah. like somebody leaving a negative comment, <laughs> you getting a charge back. It's like what's like what's like the worst? Your merchant account gets shut down. Okay, you get another one. Like what's like what's the worst thing that could happen? But a lot of times, we just let fear hold us back because yeah. our fears are typically bigger than our desires to actually win. Hmm. So we'd rather just shrink back into like what we're comfortable instead of like going bigger. Wow, that is so dope. So what Dr. Marco Rosso is saying right now is mm-hmm. that don't allow fear to mm-hmm. hold you back. And, you know, he's also a man of God, too, and some of you don't know. Uh, one of the things you said, too, was that your gift, one of your gifts is teaching. Yeah. And even in, I think it's Romans 12 or so, when I was talking about list, listing gifts, there's a gift of teaching. It's also like a, a gift that the Bible says that God gives to people. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people have these gifts of teaching, but they are not profiting with that gifts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because you man, you, I'm sure you know this, some of the brokest people around are Christians. Oh, for sure. You know, yeah. um, <clears throat> part of it is, because we're just flowing with this conversation. We're just yeah. having a conversation 100%. with our friend today. So you rich friends are just, just listening in. Yeah, so <laughs> our, we're just having a <laughs> conversation with our friends. So you guys just pick what you can from it, you know. Because it's one of my passion too. When mm-hmm. I was in Bahamas too, I spoke at a church and I spoke on kingdom finance, you know, yeah. about using their gifts, you know. Because there's this teaching in the church, especially in the black church, for generations to come. Maybe it kind of happened partly because of slavery or whatever, sure. whereby people are just kind of just told to just kind of wait on God, mm-hmm. just believe God. Yeah. So the only f- way to prosper that they were taught was, you know, give your tithes, give your offering, yeah. mm-hmm. sow seeds, wait on God, believe in God. Somehow God just going to send a rich person, the wealth of the sinners laid up for the just. Mm-hmm. Yeah. just go, God going to send a rich person, just give you money or something miraculous will happen to yeah. you. Mm-hmm. And there's not a lot of emphasis on 
personal responsibility. Right. You're working on your mindset. You're starting that business. Yep. You mm -hmm. yeah, you sow that seed, but when the harvest come, you need you need to have something or you need to have a basket for God to, to bring in that resources, mm -hmm. you know. And so when you said earlier about you know one of your gifts, one of your anointing, which is an anointing, because your yeah. gift is an empowerment from God, which is an anointing, is teaching, yeah. right? So can you kind of break that down a little bit for somebody listening that can say, hey, I can teach too. Yeah. But I don't know what to teach. I don't know what to do with that. I don't, whatever, right? Yeah. So how did you transition from, you know what? I can teach. I can take complex things and mm -hmm. make it simpler. But now there, there gotta be a switch now. How, mm -hmm. how can I switch that? I can I flip that yeah. to become a money generating something, right? Yes. For sure. Sounds so I think good. I think I think when it boils down, I think the first thing, the first step is like understanding that what you've experienced or what you know is valuable. Mm-hmm. Before you can teach it, because mm -hmm. like, the first thing you got to know is like, okay, this is about this is valuable. This experience, this knowledge, the all this is this is valuable. So like for example, somebody may think that, okay, they raise kids, their kids went off to college. You know, the kids are doing their thing. Yeah, they'll be like, "Well, that's what I'm supposed to do." It's like, well. That's, <laughs> that's expertise. Yeah. yeah, right. Like people will pay you. It's this thing called parenting coaching. Yeah. Yes. People will pay you to teach them your formula of how you develop these amazing kids. Wow. Right. You've been, I was talking to a lady one time and um, she was like, Marco, I want to do the coaching thing, but um, I don't really have any expertise. And I was like, okay, well, miss um, Diane, I forget the Diane, I think. Um, tell me like, what's some stuff that you've done? Mm -hmm. And she was like, um, she was like, I've never really done anything but been married 35 years. <laughs> and I was like, wait, 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 wait. So you've been married 35, 35 years. years. And she was like, yeah. I was like, you still married? And she was like, yeah. I was like, happily married? And she was like, yeah. You know, some challenges and so forth. I'm like, of course. Um, but you're still married. She was like, absolutely. I'm like, do you know how many people right. would love to know how to get married mm -hmm. and stay married for 35 years? Wow. And she was like, I never thought about that. So a lot of times we got to just realize, I tell people all the time, it's more money in what you know than what you do, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what are you doing, right? It's value in that. Like if, you, if you've if you done a thing, so for example, let's say somebody has lost 20 pounds. Mm -hmm. It's got to be like 200 pounds. Let's say you lost 20 pounds. You, do you know how many other people would love to know how to lose 20 pounds? So right. just exactly. say so like, well, let's now sit down. And look back at what you did. Mm -hmm. And then how do you reverse engineer the process? What's step number one? What did you do? Number one? Step number two was it what you did. Number mm -hmm. three, what did you do? Number four, what did you do? Number five, what did you do? Number six, what did you do? Now, I will say this. It, it takes some focus because a lot of people who like, who've done something can't teach it. Yeah. Because they just, it's just not their thing, right? And we see a lot of that on the online space. Mm -hmm. It's like, people will be like, oh, I made a million dollars. You know, I ran this play or whatever and made a million. Mm -hmm. uh, and now they got everybody else like buying into it, but they don't really know how to unpack what they did. Right. Mm -hmm. Or they're discounting a lot of the favor that led to them doing this thing. Mm -hmm. So for example, you got some people, they'll be like, um, oh, I made a million dollars in a day, mm -hmm. for example, right? And, but they went to somebody else's event they spoke on that platform and then they did these level of numbers. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you can't really teach that because exactly. this 10, 15, 20 years of brand recognition you've built got you on that stage. Okay, right. and, 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 and they, they always leave that part. They yeah, always leave that out. And yes. that messes people up, though. 100%. Because that's one of the reasons why a lot of people get discouraged. Yep. Because some people have some advantages, yep. mm -hmm. right? If mm -hmm. you if you've... You have a brand name or you've been on some reality show. Or they leave whatever, all that out. They leave it out. And okay. you just try to tell people that, hey, you just put your course out there or your coaching program and yep. you just make this money like me. Yep. But you know, also saying that you spend a million dollars a month on ads. Bingo. And this person's trying to don't have that money. Right. Bingo. And they're then, bootstrapping. And they're bootstrapping. <laughs> 100%. And they get discouraged and then they quit or they think it's not working. Yep. But not knowing that, hey, you got to build this advantages yep. that this other person have mm -hmm. and that doesn't come over that doesn't come immediately yep. right. Right. Over time, right? they don't teach that yeah. they leave they like they just tell people like oh you just just do this this and the third but they don't like they don't they don't say well i emailed my list and i already had seventy five thousand people on my list exactly so i was able to do so they, they leave all that out so i think some of that is integrity and then some of that is just like it's a cash grab but i yeah. think the biggest thing for people is to understand that you have expertise that's valuable and you teaching other people that, that actually helps other people. 
So it's like, how can you take an experience that you've had? How can you take skills that you have or, 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 um, and then like, how do you use that to help other people mm -hmm. accomplish a goal that you accomplish faster? And then people will pay you that because you make money by solving problems, right? Yeah. And that's all it is. Yeah. It's a value. Money is just a value exchange. That's it. If I give enough value, I'm going to make money off of that yeah. value because whatever it is that I'm offering, somebody needs this information. 100%. 100%. 100%. And people don't realize, to your point that you made a little while ago, it's like a lot of times people, especially because we work with a lot of Christians as well, right? Yeah. yeah. And, um, and I'm going to be honest with you. Like anytime... So like, especially when I was doing enrollment calls mm -hmm. and I get on with a Christian, you can tell because you know, oh, they come yeah. on like quoting scripture and everything, <laughs> yeah. right? And I'm always like, oh Lord, I already know how this call going to go, right? Because they're always waiting on God to do it, right? So I'm like, people don't really, here's my philosophy, right? I'm not, I'm not a Bible scholar or none of that. But my thing is this, the Bible, and I don't know all the scripture, but I know because I'm actually working because Pastor D got me doing something Sunday because we do this thing called Money, Money Sunday at the church. So he had me teach something on Monday or whatever. But anyway... Um, it ba and I was going through you know my layout this morning, mm -hmm. and basically it says, God blessed them, and then said, "Go be fruitful and multiply." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for he didn't say go be. He's like he blessed them and mm -hmm. then said. So that means to me that he already blessed us. Yeah, exactly. So so for you to be fruitful, right? And I'm I'm big on words. So fruitful means produce like a fruit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's like what is fruitful a fruit mm -hmm. so it's like how does a fruit produce a fruit produces by having a seed mm -hmm. so the fruit has to have some seed you press you see what i'm saying yeah. so it's like so that means we're seedful already mm -hmm. so i tell people all the time that god blesses us in seed form mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. which it was already blessed so now we have these seeds in us mm -hmm. however if we're not seeing the harvest of the blessing mm -hmm. that just means we're not being we're not producing. Like, we're already That's seedful right. because it says God blessed us already. Yeah. Now we're supposed to go be fruitful and multiply. Exactly. But we're not. And business mm -hmm. is the ultimate way yeah. to exactly. be fruitful and multiply. Exactly. exactly. And there's no other no other permission needed. No. It's, it's a it. be fruitful and multiply. That's it. So you Let don't need it. to be like, uh, Dr. Marco, uh, I need to pray about it. No. I need to talk to God about it. I need to be led by God yeah. about it. I need to uh, fast and pray. And and really, when Christians talk like this, let me, let's me let help Christians right now. When you talk like this, it's really fear yes. mm -hmm. that is holding you back. And right. you're trying to use God as your crush, right? Yep. That's what right. Are you? Trying to use God as your crush for your inability to, to overcome fear, to be courageous, to take risks, to stand, mm -hmm. to do something new f in, with your life. And you, it just makes you feel better. And sometimes people, too, they've been trained by church 100%. to be like, oh, don't yeah. ever do nothing without talking to God first. I'm like, okay, do you have to talk to God every morning if you should brush your teeth or not? Mm. Do you have to talk to <laughs> God and say, God, should I? You know, like sometimes some stuff are just so, people think it's deep, but just yeah. spooky to me. Like mm -hmm. some stuff don't make sense. Like mm -hmm. as a child, you can ask your parent for every, you know, permission. Sure. Can I go use the bathroom? Can I wear this? Can I go out to be with my friends? But when you become an adult or an adult Christian, they're saying this you don't have to go check with God on because you already know God's will for your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's to be fruitful. It's to multiply. It's to have dominion. Mm -hmm. It's to be prosperous. That's it's right. to give. Yeah. Right? You, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might be like, okay, God, how much should I give? Mm -hmm. But not should I give. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. And sometimes too, you... The Holy Spirit is one with us. It does is right there talking to us all the time. Yep. So if you have to always check in with God, you have a hearing problem mm -hmm. or something. It's, it doesn't so make you, you have spiritual. a fear problem. Yeah. Or a fear yeah. problem. You just don't believe. Off. You just don't believe. A lot of people can quote every scripture, but they don't really believe it. Exactly. Right. It's like you've just you've. I just, mean, the devil can quote scripture. Bingo. You just <laughs> you've memorized all this stuff, uh -huh. but yeah. you don't actually believe it. It's like, well, how do you know I don't believe? Because I can tell by your actions. Yeah. yeah. You can tell by your actions the if fruit you believe. Of it. your life will show what, what you believe. You actually believe. One hundred percent. If you sit here and you really truly believe that God has aligned your steps, brought you certain people and caused you to watch certain things, listen to certain things, be connected to certain things. After a while, it can't just be God, 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 God. That's what we call an overextension of God's sovereignty. Mm -hmm. Like there's a part that God does and then there's a part that you do. Exactly. And a lot of what God has does, he's already done. 100%. Like it's already been, it, just like you said, mm -hmm. he said, I've blessed them, mm -hmm. be fruitful, and multiply. Yeah. So then that now puts it in on our plate. Yep. 
in our court to now start playing the ball yep. and start moving things and making things happen. But if we're always consumed by fear, and I feel like, too, a lot of times people doubt their own ability. Mm, that's a good they, one, too. I mean, because how can you how can you sit here and you say, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that. Okay, boom, here you go. Yep. Here's the play. Here's the play. <laughs> yeah. There's a business in a box. Here you go. Right. And then you... Then they freeze. You're scared. Oh, uh, let me go pray. Yeah. But you just said you want, that's that what you wanted. wanted. That's and what now you I gave for. it to you on a silver platter and you're still, that means that you're doubting your own abilities. You're doubting what you can produce from your own hands. And really, if you're a believer yeah. and you really believe the scripture, that's not even, that shouldn't even be a thing. Because if you can't do it, then guess what? Christ in you that strengthens yep. you. I can do all things. Christ that all thing, all things. Start a business, yes. Learn technology, yes. Yep. Um, communicate and network with people, yes. All of that, you can do it. But yeah, the, now if if you believe the scripture, right? So not only are you doubting yourself, yeah, you're uh, doubting Christ in you. Man, we're gonna take you out of church, girl. <laughs> so that's what you, that's what you do. Like, like if you don't, so like so like for me, it's like entrepreneurship like people want to be entrepreneurs you got i believe you got entrepreneurs and you got entrepreneurs yes yeah you got entrepreneurs they want what entrepreneurship looks like but they don't want what it actually is mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so it's like entrepreneur the definition of entrepreneurs entrepreneurships is somebody who takes risk mm -hmm. financial risk specifically yeah. mm -hmm. people want to be entrepreneurs without taking the risk mm -hmm. it's like entrepreneurship at the highest level is believing that whatever decision i make and whatever happens I'll be able to figure it out. Exactly. Right. It's, and then, especially if you're a Christian and you're a believer, it's like, all right, not only can I figure it out, mm -hmm. but I got Christ with me, God with me, here with me. Yes. Yeah. And no matter what, I'll be good. Facts. Mm -hmm. But you really don't believe that, though. Mm -hmm. You really don't believe that God is with you at all times, in the valley. Uh, you don't believe none of that. Right. Yeah, you know the scripture. You know it. <laughs> like, some people hear me now, and they quoting this. They're like, no, he said that wrong. <laughs> Probably so. <laughs> I got the premise, though. Right? Right, right. And I'm like, I'm the type of person, I'm like, all right, I'm going to try this thing out and, like, see for real. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I bless them, go be fruitful and multiply, dominion over the earth. Like, mm -hmm. do this, do this. Uh, pretty much, God, like, I got you. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. I'm like, okay, let's see. Let's that's all right, I. That's right, all right, I need right. to hear. Like, I don't need to. Like, I don't need to know every scripture. It's like, okay, boom, that's the one. When you pray, believe that it's already done. All exactly. right, enough said. He well, even said, "Test me in this." When he was talking about the tithes, he was like, "Test me in this." So guess what? Okay, if you want me to test you in the tithes, then I'm gonna test you in this too. Wow. I'm gonna test you in that. Hey, like, let's go. And let's that's go. the re whole relationship aspect mm -hmm. of it. And it flows into entrepreneurship. It flows into investment. It flows into taking on a different identity than how you see yourself. Yeah, you might be an employee right now. Yep. But is employee part of your identity tomorrow? No. Bingo. You're an entrepreneur, but that requires faith. 100%. Yeah. Entrepreneurship is a 100% faith walk. 100%. It's right after discipleship in my book. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. That's why people say. Yeah. People, people say I work with faith-based entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And I always be like, all, all entrepreneurs are faith-based. All, all of them. 100%. Yeah. All of them. 100%. Yeah, because you can't always guarantee... You run out. Sometimes you don't. You can't always know if it's gonna always work mm -hmm. or not. But, or you, not. Yeah. But, but you gotta keep going. You gotta keep going. You're gonna launch a business. You don't. It's uh, it's risky. Yeah. You know when Everything. we you know uh, we record in our, in our studio because we used to have a office and we would pack with you know and it was a smaller place. Mm -hmm. But then to you know people start coming to me like hey help me create courses and coaching programs and stuff but it's just too small it's just pretty much one office and you know and then I saw this space which was like four five times or six seven times bigger because mm -hmm. this just, just was just about the size of my office there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> way bigger you know and then I was like okay I want this you know um, the rent is even four times more what I, what I was paying them. Mm -hmm. But it took faith. Mm -hmm. Because what about if nobody come do their courses? What about if we're going to rent it out? What about if nobody come to rent it out, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you always start a business, you're always going to overspend, especially when you do anything that involves construction. Mm -hmm. You're always going to exceed your budget 100% mm -hmm. of the time, you know? So there's always this uncertainty things that happen when you're running a business right mm -hmm. so it requires faith yeah and one of the things you said which i also like to which i also hope our rich friends who also pick up too is this to me to one of the things i love about entrepreneurship to one is a journey of faith mm -hmm. but also two 
if you really flow with it, it trains your mindset. 100%. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and the more you do it, your, your mindset muscle mm-hmm. start growing. Mm-hmm. And then you start becoming more, less, less afraid. Yeah. So to the point, I'm like, okay, do I have all the numbers? Do I have all the, enough clientele lined up before we open up the studio? No. But I've done entre- entrepreneurship enough that I have a certain level of confidence that I can always figure it out. Mm-hmm. Right. See, when I launch it, if right. if people not coming for courses, I can rent out a space. If people not coming for space, I can do courses. I mean, I will always figure it out. It will always work out, you know. Mm-hmm. And I hope that you take that rich friends, you know, that just uh, just learn how to figure things out. Because sometimes a business might look perfect on paper, but once you launch, something happens, <laughs> yep, right? Sure. But you have to know how to pivot. That's the word. You have That's to pivot, it. how to switch, how yep. to make things change, right? Yeah, 100%. 100%. I mean, uh, you got to... Were you always successful from day one with your business? They were going to switch and talk about your business. So, yeah. so I think... Because some people just have that favor of God on their life. Yeah. Same people, whatever they touch, just it's gold. go up, up, and up. Mind but but some other people, they kind of go up. It kind of shake a little bit. What was your, how, how was yours? So, in hindsight, I say yes, because like, because you mentioned something, you said even with ads, you don't really know if they're going to work. Mm-hmm. So my philosophy is even with ads, so ads always work, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And the reason is, so like, even if you don't make, so first of all, when you're paying for ads, you're paying for data anyway, not necessarily sales. Okay. And then the data leads to the sales, right? Okay. So it's like, let's say, for example, you launch a campaign and it flops. It still worked because you found out something that didn't work. Okay. Even if it didn't make money. Even if it so didn't make money. It Come on, work, mindset. That's a good, money. Yeah, that's because you found, you realize, okay, this ain't work. Okay. Right. So you got a result, right? You did get a result. You got a result. And more people got to know about your brand too. And more people got to know about your brand. And just the fact that you got a result. I didn't buy from you, I fuck. I didn't buy, I, but I saw your ads for a long time. Right. But I got to know you. Mm-hmm. It took some time. It took some time. Because so, like only 2% of the market is ready to do business right now. Right. So it's like, you got to be showing up, Right. So it's like, I'm launching ads and it's like, okay, that didn't work. You got a result. So you actually got a win. Mm. Now, not getting a win is not launching the ad. Mm. So you may be like, well, I saved my money. Well, you still lost though. <laughs> because you was just holding the money. You're supposed to be multiplying. Yeah. Uh, not holding. Okay. The t- not holding the talents, right? Okay. You, sw- <laughs> you, you supposed to have been going to do something with that. Okay. But you're like, no. Okay. Okay. It's, 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 right. it's safely, you're, you're it's safely in my account. <laughs> we're supposed so to I'm just, winning. We're supposed to be just chilling, having a conversation. You're taking us to church. And right. Us to I'm just saying, right? It, MBA it, all together, I'm just like saying. PhD. So it's like in okay. hindsight, in hindsight, I, I've i always been successful because I've, I've always been learning something new. Mm. So even when things wasn't happening as fast as I wanted them to happen, I, it was still working Yeah, because it was like working on me. So mm. I was getting better. Mm-hmm. But I can see that in hindsight, but it's like, if you got to, I get it. Somebody like, hey, I got a revenue goal. I didn't hit it and they see it as a failure. And it's like, not really, because every goal isn't necessarily meant to be hit. Mm. Some goals are just meant to see how far you can go. Okay. That so happens. so if you hit it, so like, for example, t- last year was our my best year ever in all areas. However, I didn't hit 90% of my goals. Okay. That's but did you have to spend more to make it your best year financially though? So but that's one people don't see sometimes. So I didn't just say about, financially. I didn't it was, make it a million dollars, but then they spent $700,000 on ads. So they great question. The next three, so, so a lot of people don't understand. So it's like one thing I understand about ads and one thing I love about ads and I preach about ads is ads is the fastest way, hands down, to, like, grow your wealth. Okay. okay. Like, you got a lot of ways. You got real estate. You got stocks. Some people, like, their thing is crypto. It's, like, different things, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you can, you can't put your money nowhere else and get as a higher ROI as ads. Okay. So, for example, if you look at, like, the top investors in the world, if you look at, like, a Warren Buffett, if you look at a Ray Dalio or something like that, mm-hmm. these guys probably, probably get 20% a year, right? Mm-hmm. And that's great, right? I mean, of course, they're playing with big money. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. With ads, so I know a lot of my guys who do real estate. So typically they get twelve percent, sixteen percent, something like that a year, right? Um, with ads, I mean you can get two, three, four hundred percent every month. So you can spend five thousand dollars on ads and make twenty five thousand every month, and that's just an immediate money. Because let's just say, for example, you got you spend five thousand on ads. You got let's say you was paying ten dollars a lead, so you got about five hundred leads. 
Okay. Out of those 500 leads, you got end up getting five people to buy your offer. Let's say your offer right. is 5,000. So you made 25,000. Let's say some did payment plans, some did in full. So let's say you let's say your cash collected was half of the 25,000. So let's say you made let's say you collected 13,000 of the 25,000. Mm-hmm. So you doubled your money right out the mm-hmm. gate, right? And then you got the, the rest of it going to come in over the next 30 to 60 days. That was just from five of the leads. Mm-hmm. You still got 495 leads right. that didn't buy. So out of that, so now you immediately got a, what, 5000 to 25000 You immediately got a 5X return on your money. Mm-hmm. But over the next 30, 60, 90 days, 6 months, 12 months, mm-hmm. you're still going to get a higher ROI. So we made money this year from money we spent last year. I see. We spent money last year from money we spent the year before. Wow. Yeah. But a lot of times people are short, they're so short-sighted. Sighted, yeah. Where they're like, I need to make money now. It's yeah. like, yeah, you're going to make money now. But a lot of people kill the later on money for like having to make money right now, and they need, they get either. I see. Wow. Okay. That's Rich friends, right if there. you enjoyed this episode, <laughs> make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to this podcast. And again, we have Dr. Marco Rosso, the co-founder of Client Attraction University. And this episode is brought to you from Vonza.com, the best all-in-one platform for your online courses and to run your entire business online. So now. Let's focus on client attraction Mm -hmm. and running ads. So just what is client attraction and what does ads still work? A lot of people are, there's a lot of chatter right now on the internet because we're probably going to title this episode how to make a billion dollars in revenue or generate a billion dollars. So what's the play? Give give our audience the play. What's the play if somebody just starting out? How can they run using your client attraction you know, playbook, how can they make their first 1,000, 10,000, 20,000? I'll probably get to the millions like you're making right now. Give our audience the play, right? So let me ask you this. So what would you say? Because I want to go bigger. Let's go bigger, Let's right? Go bigger. I mean, this is a new right. rich show. Let's yeah, go bigger. Because yeah. if we think about it, if you own, I tell people a lot of time, if you only want to make $100,000 in business, you should just get a job. Okay. Facts. Like, it's too hard. It's mm-hmm. too hard to only make want to make 100000 Like, right. if you only make 100000 after you pay taxes and all that, you mm-hmm. could have just went and got a job. Mm-hmm. And the amount of time you're going to put in, because mm-hmm. you could have went and did your job 40 hours a week, uh-huh. went home. Guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Your business, and a guarantee, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Business. Mm-mm. It's always on the mind. Mm-hmm. It ain't gonna, it's always, even when you go home, it's still on the mind, mm-hmm. right? So let's give at least a million dollar play, right? So let's give, let's give first million, million, million dollars. First million. Let's do the first million. All right. So the first million. So let's say your first million... Let's say you got let's say you got a five thousand dollar offer. Okay. Let's go five thousand. Cause normally we we typically show our clients that you should charge three thousand to ten thousand dollars or more. Okay. Mm-hmm. So let's pick a price. We're gonna go five thousand, go ten thousand. What you wanna do? Let's do five thousand. Let's do five thousand. So we're gonna go five thousand. So five thousand dollars. You're gonna create your program. Mm-hmm. Um, you're gonna host the program in Vanza, mm-hmm. right? The whole nine. How much is Vanza? Uh, ninety nine dollars a month. Ninety nine dollars a month. Lowest. Boom. So you got ninety nine dollars a month mm-hmm. okay. out of the pocket. Mm-hmm. Boom. Five thousand. So five thousand. So five thousand to make a million. We only require two hundred clients. Sales, yeah. Mm-hmm. So let me pull up my calculator real quick. So people like have know exactly what to do. Hmm. So you really only require twenty nine leads a day. Twenty nine okay. leads. By twenty nine leads. Okay. So let me show you how. What? How do I know that? So so we got two hundred clients. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna divide that by. I think two thousand. No, but that's right. My bad. <laughs> 200 yeah. divided by 12. Mm-hmm. So you require about 17 clients a month. 17 clients a month. A month. Okay. So we'll divide that by four. So about four clients a week. Mm-hmm. Okay. You make a million. So how do you do that? All right, great. So what we found is that 10% of your leads. So if you take somebody from an ad mm-hmm. to a landing page, a landing page where they go to, you know, you enter your name, email, and phone number, something sure. for free. Mm-hmm. So for example, let's say somebody goes to a landing page mm-hmm. and they're like, Free video reveals a simple strategy to create a course and make an extra million dollars a year. Okay. Boom. So they opt in. Of course, you got to clean it up with ads and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but we'll just go with that. So they opt in. They watch this video. Mm-hmm. And then from there, it's like, hey, click on the button below, schedule a call, and then we'll talk about how you can use our platform to do this. So they get on the phone. So typically, if you want to get four sales, you're going to require, let's say your close rate is 10%. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you're going to require to get four to enroll. You got to talk to 40 people. Okay. What we found is that 10% of your leads apply to work with you. Okay. So they'll fill out the application, 10%. Now, mm-hmm. that's immediate. Of course, you still get some other. So let's say, for example, if we want to, and 50% of your applications are going to show up. Mm-hmm. Y'all follow mm-hmm. me? Mm-hmm. 
So let's say if you want to get 40 people on the phone, that means you got to get 80 applications. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you want to get 80 applications, you got to get 800 leads. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So 800 leads. Oh, let's do that math. So if we got 800 leads for the week, because we're talking about a week, right? Mm -hmm. So 800 leads. Um, and we divide that by seven. So that's a little more because it's a 10% close rate. Mm -hmm. So if it's a 20% close rate, which is more ideal, right. then of course that cuts down. Okay. So it's like, well, how do you do that? Well, you can do a mixture. So number one, you can create content teaching people about how to create courses or whatever your thing is. That's one. And then how you accelerate that is you create an ad. So free video. So let's say um, right now, a lot of people are missing money, leaving out of leaving money on the table because it's a hidden $325 billion industry that most people aren't telling you about. And that's the online course industry. And nobody's really teaching people how to actually maximize it. I actually just created this free video that shows you exactly how to do it. Mm. And I show you how to use the platform that I personally use. And I'm going to show you how to get the platform for free or for pennies on a dollar or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Click on the link right now. Go check it out. So now they go opt in They go check it out. So now we're pushing um, these leads from the from the ad and the leads from the content. We're pushing them into that same system. So you only require that one funnel process. Mm -hmm. That one offer, mm -hmm. sending out one email a day, mm -hmm. create one piece of content a day, have that one conversion method, talking to people on the phone when they apply to work with you, um, and you speak to one target audience, solve one problem. Like All you got to do is pick one thing. A lot of people, they're just trying to do too much. They're trying to do challenges. They're trying to do webinars. Nah, doc, they're, trying, nah, they're just trying doc. to do way too much. This plan that you that you speaking on right here, this is too hard. I'm going to tell you why. Why? Because it requires focus. It requires focus. That's the hardest part. Mm -hmm. And that it, is the and it requires belief that it's quite, simple. Yeah. Exactly. It's, I was just going to say, it's quite simple. Mm -hmm. It's just run the numbers. It's just math. It's just math. The math is math. Yep. Basic math. Basic. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the way you're saying it is you have to focus on each piece and make it simple. Yep. And simple is very difficult for Simple a is very good. Especially when you've been taught so long by all these other guys that it's yeah. complex. Yeah. So you've been taught that it's complex and confusing for so long that even when it's simplified, you still, it's still, yes. it's still gotta okay. be complex. <clears throat> so you say pick a simple problem to solve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Then you run ads to yep. that problem. Mm -hmm. Well, the ads are last. After you put all the process together, the then process. you run ads to it. Okay, yeah, yeah I want to make sure that yeah. our rich friends are following. So pick a problem to pick solve. Pick a problem you solve. Right? Then what's the next step? So you pick a problem you solve, mm -hmm. and then you decide. I call it the rule of one. Okay. So you pick a problem you solve, mm -hmm. one problem. Mm -hmm. Then you pick out who's that one dream client mm -hmm. that you want to work with. Like, And I say, ask three questions. Who are they? Mm -hmm. Do I like them? Can they pay? <laughs> oh, 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 now you're making it deep now. <laughs> Who are they? Do I like them? Because there's a lot of people working with clients they don't like. They don't like, yeah, yeah facts. Yeah. Just because they need to make money. Right. Yeah. It's like, you it don't got to work with people. So you asked me about client attraction. Yeah. Client attraction is about attracting the ideal clients you want while repelling the ones you don't want. So how do, how do you do that for your personal business? How do you attract the clients you want to work with yep. and repel those I feel is, like is can I just I feel like for him specifically mm -hmm. just the way he comes off him being his authentic self mm -hmm. is going to naturally 100% right. 100% okay. naturally is going to repel certain Bingo. people Bingo. and then attract other people 100% that's going to naturally um, repel people um and now we're going more with this whole wealthy black coach mm -hmm. uh, movement okay. so that's turning people yeah. off I see. Um, also <laughs> just, <laughs> uh, you'd be surprised man it's because you use wealth in because i'm using black oh black. Mm -hmm. it's, it's even it's even it's even offending black people because <laughs> you know because you know we always want to be inclusive yeah you know when even when we was in segregation all we wanted to do was with integrate yeah that was our only goal we want to be able to go do business with the white man because oh, we think yeah. that their stuff is better Mm -hmm. And we even see that today. We want to go, I ain't going to say no names, but we want to go do business with these cats. So we yeah. want to be on the flyer with these cats. Yeah. So we want to be on stage. Or we want to bring them on our yeah. platform. Yeah. And it's like, just yeah. because they believe theirs exactly. is better. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I, 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 we're bringing Grant Cardone. Okay, good. <laughs> but, but, hey, Michael Russell will yeah, really man. bring the yeah. goodies to your audience, though. No, man, they got to bring white because white is right. Yeah, that's that's wow. That's the mentality. We see it. So then that black wealth. No, because this is really good. So then 
you're you're just by the name alone it's mm. repelling people it's well- and we don't even mind like the diversity is a good thing we want to see different people mm-hmm. different cultures because that brings yep. that but the it's the mindset yep. behind it 100 percent. what's the mindset the mindset around I mean the whole wealthy black coach movement yeah the whole mindset is about it is like i so first of all 99 percent of our clients are black anyway Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, our team is diverse. Mm-hmm. Right. So my operations director, um, like our team is super diverse, black, white, the whole nine. Mm-hmm. Right. We're all over the world. Um, however, I think our people are drastically underserved. Yeah. Right. Um, and some people say, well, such and such teach black people, such and such teach black people, such and such teach black people. It's like, yeah, but they're not really giving them the sauce. Exactly. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're yeah. taking their money. They're milking black. Yeah, they're yeah. milking. Also, there yeah. you go. There you go. They're milking black uh, people. Yeah, and they are, most of them, honestly, they are not really pro-black. They're pro-money. 100%. Because when we when we launched Vonza, that's how I knew it. We mm-hmm. had a black influencer. You probably know this per- I know you know this person. That was like, oh my God, it's a black-owned thing. The mm-hmm. only one in the space. At least in the only one space. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah. And then about a couple of months later, this person reached out to me and said, Hey, this other white competitor, yeah. they saw me promoting Vonza and they want to give me a check and put me in an exclusive deal. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Fam, I thought you were pro black. No, man. No, and man. this person eventually went to do an exclusive deal with that other person, yep. but I thought you were pro black. So that's when I kind of coined that phrase. Mm-hmm. I love these inf- black influences. They are not really pro black. They're pro, pro money. money. I love that. That's 100%. <laughs> it's 100%. So, so I saw this massive gap and it was like, nobody was like genuinely serving our people. Yeah. Um, and, and we're amazing at like helping coaches and consultants and type businesses like yeah. scale. So I was like, what if we just went all in on that? Cause like, ain't nobody serving our people like that. So we figure out when we do see somebody that look like us, like you said, they milk us. And then we figure out we got to go into these other environments because white is right. Um, <laughs> and then they take advantage of us. Yeah. It's like, they don't really care about us. Like, yeah. like even with your man, Grant Cardone, who you mentioned, is like, I heard him say on the podcast one time that, and um, and when I even talk about it, like everybody be get quiet. But like he said <laughs> on the podcast one time that um he was the dude Patrick Bet David was interviewing him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, and that I forgot what he was talking about, but somehow it came up and um Grant was like, you know, I got a lot of black friends, right? And he was like, I got so many black friends, I should be able to say the N-word. Right. Yeah. And he, you saw that? I think I heard about I, it. I saw it. I'm like, I'm, nobody tell me this. I saw it. I, I'm like, and I was a fan at first. I almost I was a fan, but I was like on his stuff. Yeah. Um. And then he was like, you know, hey, somebody contact me and give me permission to use the N word. And I'm like, what? And you could see the dude Patrick Beck David. He got very uncomfortable. You could see it in his body language. He was trying to change the subject. And I was like, wow. And I'm like, and I and I I say it all the time. I'm like, why are we still doing business with dude? Like nobody right. else heard this. Right. But again, we feel like. That adds value if we get a him or we get a such yeah, and such so or we get a such and such. Validation. It adds values to our brand. But no, we're already validated. We're already exactly. original people. Like I we're mean, already the dopest. Yeah. Exactly. And the black economy is a multi-trillion. One hundred percent. If and if we just pay money in our own culture, mm-hmm. we won't even need to need all of them. But let me ask you though, because I want to make sure that we we kind of milk you as much as possible from knowledge, <laughs> and I want to make sure that our, our, our the audience, you know, they really get as much value from it. Because I know a lot of them too. They know you, the wealthy, you're successful. You know, they be like, "How was the play? What's mm-hmm. the game?" So you were saying you were breaking a million dollars. I want to yep. make sure. I think we kind of went into some yep. of that stuff. Okay. So the first thing was the because fir- I'm a steps guy. If yep. you can give me, me too, on the same, I'm the, I'm the same I, way. I, I I can run the play. I'm so the, the same first way. step, choose a single problem. Pick a problem that you want to. So uh, I always tell people. Five, some people like they always be strong. Like, how can I pick one thing? Mm-hmm. I, I'm good at a lot of stuff, and I'm like, of course, we, we like we're geniuses. Like mm-hmm. all of our ancestors were multi geniuses and all that, but we got to pick one thing. Mm-hmm. So it's like, and I always say, well, how can I pick one? It's like, okay, five years from now, mm-hmm. what do you want to be known for? Mm-hmm. Ten years from now, what do you want to be known for? That's good. Mm-hmm. When somebody says your name, what do you want to be known for? Mm-hmm. Pick that, and they're like, oh, I want to be known for this. All right, cool. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So, what's the one <laughs> problem you solve? Get.